industry's existence still baffles me a little bit. Magazines, but not like um, esteemed magazines that hire real journalists, you know, like Life and Time and uh, even like you may disagree with them, but The Economist and stuff like that. Like that stuff, I get it, you know. You, you get an Economist subscription when you're 21 years old and you're in your third year of university and you're like the only Republican in a sea of Democrats and you're like, I need someone who's like a kindred spirit. And then you just kind of ride that subscription until you're dead, essentially. You ride it for like 60, 70 years. Um, I'm talking more about like the when you get to the checkout line of the grocery store, you see the magazines and the, the tabloids are one thing. The Gwen Stefani, Blake Shelton, all the HGTV polycules that are like, will they or won't they? Are they flipping? Are they flopping? I get that because human beings have a, a tendency to love drama, especially when it's people that are like so far away that it has no personal impact on you. So it's, it's guilt free, right? But it's more like the, you ever look at the grocery store magazines and it'll be like fucking Halloween magazine or something like that. And it's like, here's 80 pumpkin carving tips for the season. Like, I get that it's, we're approaching the Halloween season. I'm more just like, how can they possibly sell enough of these magazines to sustain? I guess maybe they become like a Christmas magazine after Halloween or Thanksgiving. And then after Christmas, I don't know. I don't know what they do after Christmas because nobody, maybe Valentine's Day or something like that. I don't know. It's, it's, it's very interesting to me because I also, I go to the grocery store a lot three to six times a week, genuinely. Um, but I do want to say, like, I've seen people buy everything at the grocery store. And I don't believe for the life of me, I've ever seen someone throw a magazine on the conveyor belt. Archie Comics? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Now and then. Maybe, maybe once every three months. But like, I've never seen someone throw a magazine on it, man. My grandma used to buy National Enquirer, though. Not, not when they were doing, like, the Obama's birth certificate stuff, but back when it was, like, there's a boy who's also a demon and he's living in Ohio. Here's a picture of him. Show, it, show him to me, Rachel. Show him to me. Also, I don't know if this industry is still popping, but Nostradamus, despite dying in, like, the 1700s, was, uh, he was fucking big business. When I was going to the grocery store with my grandparents a lot, like 96, 97, 98, every magazine was like Nostradamus says like the fucking world's going to end. The, the popularity of <laughs> the, the New York Yankees being good for the first time in 30 years is a, a harbinger of the apocalypse. Anyway. This, this one looks tough because I don't see any types whatsoever. Although I will say we, we bought some Pokemon cards this weekend and I was looking at the types. I was looking at the types to kind of get some Pokedoku research, man. I shouldn't say we bought them. Like my wife bought the Pokemon cards. But anyway. Evolved by item. This is a, a gimme. We'll just say Flareon for this one. That's Gen 1. Uh... And then Johto is silver gold, and then Hoenn is diamond pearl. Is that correct? Mia Goth's ears just perped up. Perped up? <laughs> Ruby Sapphire, okay. Did you hear Mia Goth's ears just perped up? Kanto Mega Evolved. Easiest day of my life. Blastoise Mega. Kanto evolved by trade. Alakazam. Bet you think I wasn't going to get that one. I was, I was fucking there, dude. I was there. Okay, Johto. Gen 2? Who the f flip is in Gen 2? Bidoof? Mega Bidoof? Mega <laughs> Mudkip? Wait, wait, wait. Swampert Mega? Swampert Mega! I don't think you're Gen 2, though. I think you might be Gen 3 or 4. Swampert Mega? Swampert Swampert Mega! <laughs> and then there's like a fucking... Chikorita becomes like fucking 
not Breloom, but it's something like that. It's something like a like a mega meganium mega meganium mega. Hmm. <laughs> I'm just happy I learned. It. And then who's Torchic? Torchic becomes fucking like in Blaze. I can I can picture it. No, I can't. No, I can't. Is Torchic even Gen 2? I have no idea, man. Okay, well, we're in trouble here. Let's just be honest. Any chance, like, Ho-Oh goes Mega? <laughs> or to Toge Kiss Mega? Evolved by trade. Evolved by item. Toge Togetic. Togepi. All right, is it worth a try? Evolved by trade. Togetic. Togepi. I was just going to put Swampert Mega again. Who's a fucking Mega, man? Mega. Magmar Mega? I'm just picking things that have like M-A-G in them. Mega. Yan Mega Mega? <sighs> Fucking <laughs> Chingling. Guaranteed. It's worth a try. Let's take a look at the game stats. Most common. So this one is an interesting one for me because the, the problem for me is that I know these Pokemon, but I have no concept of what generation they come from and no concept of... Um, which ones evolved by items, for sure. So that's tough. Like, I know, I don't know, Huntail? I know the rest of these, I think. And then, I mean, I do know, Porygon 2, even though it's least common, that might be the most likely for me to have pulled. Because it's a fucking weird Pokemon. He's weird. Just want to smoke with Ludicolo. He does look... Who's, who's the other one? There's Ludicolo and then there's like Lotad. That would be like a dream smoke triangle right there. Oh, Lotad's the one that's like five years old. I meant like the 18-year-old <laughs> Lombra. That's it. <laughs> the one where he gets like longer hair and a, like a mustache or something and he has the hat. Not the little tadpole. Why did, oh, you're right. They're not 18, 25. You got to wait to smoke weed until your prefrontal cortex is fully developed. That's why they should really start college at like age 25. Because I think you can still do a lot of damage to your brain in those like seven years. It's not like if you start taking galaxy gas when you're like 12, but it's, you can still do a little damage. We all know people that entered university and then left... Uh, Never to return to touch their old personality, but you see the video of the guy driving. This is not funny, but it's funny that this is the world we live in, I guess. Um, the video of the guy driving and he takes a hit of galaxy gas and then he just crashes his car into the car in front of him. Like, I don't know what to tell you. That's like literally the entire video. Like he does, he's, he drives to try to split the lane between two cars and just like rear ends the car in front of him. He doesn't touch the brakes or anything. I was just watching that 10 minutes ago. We got people are out here like filming themselves doing like insane crimes, man. That's probably it. It's an anime. It's probably Paprika. Mm, it's uh, Ghost in the Shell. No, this doesn't look uh, cool enough to be Ghost in the Shell. It's probably Perfect Blue. Come on, guys. This is my last chance to beat the allegations. This is the Cowboy Bebop movie. Yes! <laughs> I know the dog, man. I know the dog. Yeah, okay. I know this guy, too. This is like everybody's uh, forum avatar. I mean, that's a given. Yeah, they probably should have gotten it from that, I suppose. But you know the dog? Yeah, I know the dog. 
He's in the first picture. Oh, really? Is he the marble or the, the wooden floor? I watched a few episodes. Not of the Netflix live action, for the record. I watched a few episodes of the original Cowboy Bebop. There is no story, essentially. I watched, I watched a few episodes and was like, that's pretty good, and then never watched any more ever again. They're saying he's the strongest anime viewer of all time. He was able to watch a few episodes of an anime without turning it into a lifestyle or a hobby. Sorry, this is just fuel for a librarian eventually <laughs> getting angry YouTube comments. <laughs> I liked him more in 2011 when he was a nicer guy and I still had light in my eyes. If you choose not to decide, you still have made a choice, brother. I was thinking, actually, I was trying to go for the Tom Sawyer quote. What is it? He knows changes aren't permanent, but changes. <laughs> Edgerin James played for the NFC West in 2009. Well, good for him. He was originally on the Indianapolis Colts, of course. In NFC West, I mean, he could have gone to the Seahawks, for all I know. They're in, they, they, it doesn't get any Wester than that, man, unless they give Hawaii a team. Holy. Curtis Painter led the Big Ten in passing yards. 06 and 07 while playing for this school. 06 to 07, Ohio State. Better recognize, I have no idea. Purdue, never would have gotten it. Hey, what's the college football team? And their logo is like a, uh, it's a, like a blue Y. It's like a, it's an oval ellipsis. And then it's got a blue Y in the middle. It's BYU, the, the Mormon University. Yeah, who knew, man? Who knew? How does all chat know? I mean, if you grow up in America, I think you just kind of like, you're simmered in like college football culture. I'm starting to realize how sweet it is to be like a normal American. I'm becoming one of those Japanese guys who like wears a cowboy hat and is like, my name is like Daryl Yamamoto, yeehaw. <laughs> like, at first I was like, I don't know, being an American sports fan seems like it kind of, might suck because you only have like one day of football a year. Sure, there's like a lot of games, but like it's just one day. Then I realized, wait, fucking Saturday, bud, is all college football all day from like six in the morning Pacific until like 9 p.m. at night. And then Sunday is all football. And then Monday's got one to two football games. And then Thursday's got a football game, man. It's like there's more football than than not football. I get it now, man. I get it. High school ball on Fridays? Okay, well, let's not go crazy. I do live in Canada. I'm not watching American high school football on TV. This 22-year-old Nets point guard made his first all-star team in 2019, but was traded after they signed Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. Ben Simmons.
Hello? Hello? Oh. Sorry, I had to plug it into another USB port. I don't know, I don't know, man. You know what's annoying about computers? You fucking, they give you ports on the top of the case and then you use them and people are like, you can't fucking use the port at the top of the case. It sounds bad. Okay, give me a second here. The noise gate was never there. This is why, like, crowdsource tech support is so bad. Even when I, when I started today, I was like, do I sound okay? People were like, what happened to the noise gate? The noise gate was on Discord, brother, and your ass was not in the call. <laughs> Unless you were one of the three people that got in when I accidentally linked it to um, our private content creator Discord instead of the public one. You sound the same. Okay. Librarian, could you do me a favor? Could you go back and say, find, uh, use, because I know you're using like re uh, regex to look through the transcripts. Find everybody who said there's some static and then um, please submit a list of the usernames. And uh, don't worry, we'll take care of it from there. You've done your part. Let me see if I still, because I got my headphones plugged into the back of my mic and I just moved the port that my mic was in. Let me make sure I still got stereo sound, man. Don't do this to me. Don't do this to me, please. Please. Left channel. Yes! Right channel. Right channel. Both channels. Yeah, it's working. It's working. Oh, you know, while we're here, you guys want to get a binaural uh, spatial audio haircut? Yes! <laughs> I think that would be a good bit and then like act like it's really happening and like fuck with the person who showed it to you. They'll be like, what the fuck? He just fucking, he was so close to my ear, man. <laughs> Look at him. He thinks he's real. Ah, ah, he got my ear. Ah. And then you had like a blood pack or whatever. And then it would be, it would be fucking some stigmata shit, man. You guys see the substance yet? We'll leave that text bit there just in case because um, you never know. It could break again. <laughs> Four U.S. states border Montana, North Dakota, South Dakota, Wyoming, and this state, Idaho. Duh. Name the two celebrities here. That's Amy Adams and the motherfucker from <laughs> Modern Family who's like Jesse Tyler Ferguson. What? <laughs> Is that not his name? Oh, maybe it's Isla Fisher. Oh, it's Isla Fisher, not Amy Adams, man. Oh, that's right. It could be Jessica Chastain, actually. I don't know. Beautiful hair, though. Earrings are a little much. You know what, ladies? Maybe don't let me comment on that, sir. Maybe that would. Maybe they'd be into that. Maybe I should drop more outfit critiques. Maybe that'll pump up the female viewership a little bit. Root forty four size cherry limeade. That shit's from Sonic, a hundred percent. That's a given. September 2024, after five years on Fox, WWE SmackDown was moved back to this cable channel where it previously used to cable channel where it previously used to air. TBS. I have no idea. USA apparently. USA. Sylvester Stallone played a risk-taking police officer with a reputation for destruction in the movie Demolition Man. 
before Taylor Swift's song of the same name. This singer hit number two on the Billboard Hot 100 with Shake It Off. It's Mariah Carey. You think I don't know about the emancipation of Mimi? Twelve percent on the celebrity mashup. I'm surprised how many people got the geography done. I thought that would be like fifteen percent. Isla Fisher, you motherfucker, you. <laughs> you. <laughs> That's not fair because if you take the face away, and you just have the skull and the hair. That could be, that's like a, a wash, man, whether it's Isla Fisher or Amy Adams. That's not fair. Jessica Chastain is a, a little, like, slightly different morphology. I'm being advised not to use <laughs> the word morphology when describing a woman's appearance. Um, I mean, uh, her uh, bone structure. They're all beautiful. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, Isla Fisher and Amy Adams look very, very similar. Jessica Chastain also has red hair, but it's a little different. And then Bryce Dallas Howard, I don't know. She's, like, always smiling. Homer Simpson, smiling politely. Okay, Connections. Women have left the stream? Yeah, because unlike men, they're actually working at work. Hmm. Rocky. Rocky. Rugged. Rough. Bumpy. Scratchy. Itchy. Scratchy. Chip. National. National. This one seems hard, man. There's like seven things that mean bumpy. Like uneven, rocky, rough, bumpy. Those are like if, if something is mixed. And then rocky, rugged, bumpy, rough is like if something literally has rocks on it. Parcel. Things you send in the mail. Stitch. Rocky. Scratch. Wait, wait, whoa, whoa. Rocky is like a cartoon fucking squirrel or something. And then Scratchy is like a cat. And Stitch is like a fucking cartoon alien. And Chip? Maybe Chip? I don't know what Chip would be. Chip and Dale? Chip and Dale! They're fucking cartoon animals, dude. Yeah! Okay. Um, bed? One day there's going to be, like, I'm just wait for it. Maybe on, uh, like, what's the naughtiest day of the year? I don't know, maybe February 14th. There's going to be words that look like cock and balls. Like, literally, the letters make a cock and balls. And bed is going to be chief amongst them. You got, I don't think I need to spell it out for you. It's not a big one, <laughs> but it's, that's a cock and balls right there. I don't know what you want, especially in the font they use for connections. What are you talking about? I mean, you start from here. I don't need to spell out what that is. And then, I mean, that, you got it. It's a little, it's like you're looking at it from underneath, but like that's been known to happen, I'm sure. And then that's just the connector, man. He's 35? Yeah, and I've still got neuroplasticity. You see the average 35-year-old? People are posting, like, jokes, like, Haktua has gone viral for her opinions on how uh, Japan and South Korea should make a pan-Asian alliance to compete with Chinese hegemony. And then there's, like, blue-check alcoholic sports gamblers in the replies that are like, I don't know what's real anymore. Really? Maybe you should, like, not post because you're not cut out for this new world in the deluge of obvious mis misinformation we live in, brother. My ass just joined. Get out, man. Get out. Okay. I, hang on. I got to think. 
Amusement. Parcel. Parcel. Melon. National. Rug. Rugged or rugged. So we took Rocky out. So now you got like rough, rugged, uneven, and bumpy. That, that could be descriptions for a terrain. And then... Parcel patch. Parcel patch, plot, and bed are like garden-related words. A space in a garden. National South Amusement Parallel. Parks. <laughs> Parks, of course. I could see how purple would be the easiest, honestly. I was, I was really overthinking it. Daily Mini. I was seeing nautical navigation. Yeah, I was, I don't know, because like we always talk about the, like the parallel is like the border between the Canada and the US. I was thinking it might be something Mercator pilled as well. Charlie XCX album with a lime green cover brought all the super popular. Like presents and first names given. Where fig leaves first came into fashion, Eden. Rain-friendly rental for an outdoor wedding, tent. Someone walking in front of a train, their Anna Karenina posting. Raven, agent, 10. We get these. You're crazy? You think I didn't listen to all fucking 91 hours of Anna Karenina voiced by Maggie Gyllenhaal? On Audible, you would be right. But I definitely listened to it for like two nights and then tried to listen to it for the third night and went, who the fuck are all these people? <laughs> and, then, and then like every once in a while, I don't know, throw it on if I get sick of uh, Norman Cantor. But the fact that you got Eden is crazy to me. What are you talking Where fig leaves first came into fashion. What was your ass typing? Rome? Those aren't fig leaves, bro. Those are like laurels or like olive branches or fucking togas and shit. Rome? That's like fucking 2,000 years ago, man. People were rocking around with like a little leaf over their, their wedding tackle. What are you talking about? Julius Caesar walking outside with a little fig leaf over his twig and berries. What are you talking about? He's Austin Powers posting. <laughs> His bed. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. His bed, man. This shit is not Canadian. Blue moose chocolate fudge bites. I don't know if anybody's going to join me on this one, okay? Like, this is a he will divide us bit. Well, why does buying chips... Here's my thought process. I fucking deserve a treat. I've been working out. Chips are good. You can open them up. You can share them. It's a social thing, chips. But buying chocolate or candy from Costco that was just like emotionlessly not crafted but just produced by a machine and shoved into a bag put on a truck and like the first human being to actually lays lay eyes on the product is the person who opens it feels like it feels like giving up to me for some reason even though they're both bad for you but like the idea when you like pop open a bag of chips there's like some joie de vivre in it for me but like buying this from the grocery store is like, I'm in the midst of a depression. <laughs> it's like, fuck. I'm going to need this at some point this week. Give me the 16 ounce bag of fudge cubes. It's just fucking palm oil and brown food coloring. I don't know, man. There's something about it. Just for me, for me. I think that's what's interesting is trying to tease the... 
the differences because like nutritionally they're pretty similar but plus two but please move on I don't know like I I'll tell you straight up I, w I took my daughter to the ice cream parlor this weekend I did not have the same feeling that I would have if I got blue moose chocolate fudge bites I learned my lesson. I didn't just order for her. I said, hey, why don't we take a sample of that uh, mango pudding flavor? I gave the spoon to my daughter. She gave me a, she went like this, which means it's good. And I said, I'll take a kid's scoop of uh, mango pudding and I'll take a, a grown-up scoop of muscadine. I know you're saying, what's muscadine? I don't know, fucking chocolate and hazelnuts and fucking a hint of Cointreau. The shit was delicious, man. That was, that was life-affirming. But like eating 250 calories of gourmet fudge bites out of like a blue bag, I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know if I could. But for some reason, the chips don't, they don't kill the soul in the same way. At least not until like the third bag. If you're on like your third bag of chips, you're like, yeah, I fucked up today. But anyway, regardless, I can't fit. This is what? It's about a pound of chocolate. It's pretty cheap. I'm going to say it's like $7.99. $8.99? Yeah, okay, we're in there. I don't think chips kill the soul the same. You know what the biggest scam in the world is? Fucking, I'm just going to say it. Vegetable platter with dip. I've been to... 10 toddler birthday parties in the last year. Every single one of them had the grocery store vegetable platter with dip. I'm like one of the only motherfuckers eating it and it's just out of politeness. Not very few people touch it. And yet I think there's a lot of reasons. One, on pure taste, if you're at a birthday party, like you're already... I mean, there's like 23-year-olds there. You're like, I deserve a fucking treat. <laughs> so you'd rather have a piece of pizza than the, the crudite. Then the other thing is, I think it's like, it, they always buy it as like a healthy option so that you like have to have it. But people who like eating vegetables don't really fuck with the, the pre-cut vegetable platter. Like the baby carrots are always like covered in chalk. And then it, it comes with like ranch dressing, which is like... What if you had a healthy food, but like you nullified all of the health benefits with a dip, not to mention the like communicable disease element of it? Like, I love, I, give me some hummus or some tzatziki or something like that, and I'm, I'm, I'm down for it. But, but I'll just, you can catch me eating like the raw celery sticks, honestly. Greece. I like some raw celery. Well, it's not that far away from Greece. What about like Nigeria? Where, where did my text box go? Where did I type that? 415 kilometers. It keeps, ta where, where, it keeps taking my inputs, man. Senegal. That's cooler. See, why, Global, what have you done, man? You broke the website. Why does it take the focus away from the text box after I enter the button? Because you're clicking? Oh, you think so? Hmm. Rwanda. Uh, maybe it's because I'm clicking. <laughs> Central African Republic. I felt like I always clicked, though. Chad? Mozambique? Zimbabwe? <laughs> Angola? Mauritania? Mali? Sudan? Tanzania? Malawi? 
Djibouti. Equatorial Guinea. Cote d'Ivoire. <laughs> Cameroon. <laughs> Burkina Faso. Oh. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm starting to think of countries that like changed their name 20 years ago. Oh, it's Congo! That's the, yeah, it's the other Congo. Democratic Republic of the Congo. <laughs> Uganda? No, that's over there, man. <laughs> uh, Sierra Leone? Oh, Liberia? Guinea Bizu. That's up there, huh? I don't know. Chat, I need, I, need, I need your help. I don't know what it is, man. Gabon. Gabon. Oh. 26 guesses just to resort to cheating. That stings, man. <clears throat> I'm scared. Too many people mentioned Linksicon. I don't even want to ask what it is because you're going to be like, hit the link and suck on my balls or something like that. What is it? You wouldn't get it. <laughs> it's annoying as fuck. That tracks. It's not always a deal breaker for a guy like me, though. November 4th, 2011. Shit was like... I was flying back to Canada. And the movies that were popping off... Was Shrek Forever After? <laughs> Animation... It, was this the first Puss in Boots movie? I guess, yeah. Why would Antonio Banderas be top billing in the fourth Shrek movie, buddy? Get a life. <laughs> I always forget that this that Puss in Boots The Last Wish is the second Puss in Boots. Universal, 24 million, starring Ben Stiller. That's gotta be Walter Mitty. Nah. An action comedy. 2011, though. The Watch? That doesn't seem right. That seems like a 2013 jam. And Eddie Mar Oh, it's Tower Heist, man! It's Tower Heist. Of course. Star-studded classic. Warner Brothers opened to 12 million starring John Cho. November, this could be a Harold and Kumar Christmas for all I know. November seems like, you know, around the right time to do it. Just makes sense. Paramount Pictures about to become a $100 million earner starring Katie Featherston. A horror mystery. It's paranormal... Activity 3, if I had to guess. There you go. 20th Century Fox. Starring Justin Timberlake. Could be like a bad teacher or something like that. No, the Cameron Diaz would be top billing. Bozo. Action, thriller, science fiction. It's the other... If it's not in time, it's about time. <laughs> 85th percentile? I thought I was getting cooked today, honestly. I didn't realize, I guess I was kind of cooking. Which one is the, so in time is the one where you can see your lifespan on your wrist computer and you can like sell your time to other people. So they live longer, but you die faster. And then about time is the Domhnall Gleeson one. That's very melancholy. I watched it on TikTok. <laughs> That's funny. 
It got me laughing. It's just like David Byrne was spitting, man. It was like same as it ever was. Chibli, are you here? Were you watching the... I guess you were living your life. There was Bjork discourse this weekend. I was thinking of you. And then, like, I don't know how it came up, but it was like, here's the stuff that people were popping off for in 2000 or 2001 or whatever. So it was Bjork. And then there was a, a quote tweet of, like, Bjork that was like, I can't help but think that we presently live in an era where people... If they see something that's out of the box, they ridicule it and make fun of it rather than like giving it a chance. And I just wanted to be like, as someone who was like 15 years old when Bjork was popping off, people were not like, you weren't turning on the TV and the local news was like, yeah, I was listening to Bjork this weekend. The reason Bjork was famous was because she was fucking weird, man. And because the music was great, but mostly it was just like, you know, people were like, the, the joke was that isn't it, weird that Bjork's voice sounds like that and her music sounds like that. It wasn't like everybody back in the day was like jerking off over Kid A. It was the fucking nerds and the losers who were jerking off over Kid A. And all the cool guys got jobs and got off the internet and then the nerds made the culture and the culture propelled itself forward until 2024 and now that's the what appears to be the mainstream culture because that's what was built 20 years ago. I'm not saying Bjork wasn't popular because she was popular, but definitely the normie take on Bjork in 2001 was like, whoa, she sounds fucking weird. They were listening, exactly. They were listening to Smash Mouth and fucking like what the Wild Wild West soundtrack and stuff. Somebody. Yeah, Nickelback. I'm fucking watching Cameron Crowe movies and shit. Who let the dogs out? Why is everyone talking about Jimmy Eat World? No, one, no one's talking about Jimmy Eat World on the call, man. You want to bleed American? Fucking don't let me stop you. Well, this is a real test, Okay. Young Frankenstein to Liam Neeson's Dark Man. So, I'm thinking, let me, let me take a peek at this for a second. How dare you talk to your mother like that? You talk to her like that. She's not my mother! You gotta go Cloris Leachman. You probably take that to Beer Fest. Then I usually go Nat Faxon. And then just see what we're cooking with here on Nat Faxon. So we're trying to get the Darkman. Liam Neeson. I mean, there was, you could easily go, Yes Day, Jennifer Garner, The Invention of Lying, Ricky Gervais, Life's Too Short, Liam Neeson, but that wasn't a movie, so it won't count. <laughs> Instead, let me, let me take a peek at what we got going on here. I'm trying to get a Liam Neeson. Bruce Campbell's probably in it, too. Liam Neeson, huh? Liam Neeson's been in some shit and some good movies, too. But a lot of garbage. A lot of garbage for sure. Let's go Orange County just to see what's going on back here. I forgot where I was going. Mike White's in this? Mike White from the fucking D train? From fucking Survivor? From the White Lotus? Okay, sorry. Now I'm just, I'm on IMDB basically. Liam Neeson. Cold Pursuit, The Grey. Taken. Schindler's List. Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. Taken Two, Taken Three. Where am I? Dermot Mulroney, About Schmidt. Great movie. Jack Nicholson. Hope Davis is in this bitch. You know what else she's in? Adaptation. Wrong, motherfucker. She's in, maybe she's in Synecdoche, New York. She's in one of those. Yep, there she is right there. <laughs> one of those Charlie Kaufman movies. Samantha Borden, welcome back. Remember from the, the Minority Report reference earlier? Mr. Anderton. Okay, what are we doing here? What are we doing here? Hope floats. All right. Charles Techman. Jerry Adler. Peter Friedman. Maria Menounos. Where was I going here? Liam Neeson. You know what? Who else is in Dark Man, bro? Fucking Francis McDormand, who you may fucking know from um, 
every Coen Brothers picture ever made. But like for Philip Seymour Hoffman, I think we got to go The Big Lebowski. And then Steve Buscemi, unless she's just in this in a supporting role. Tara Reid might be a connection to Peter Stormare. Obviously, he's, uh, Peter Stormare is in Fargo with fucking Francis McDormand, who's in Darkman with Liam Neeson. Time? No disrespect, Nicholas, but nobody knows what that is or who Pete is. It's kind of ironic she's named Tara Reid, right? What? Why? What? You don't like that one? Why is it ironic? Because she's in movies. <laughs> she's not a writer. No Man's Sky. Etherlik, the tracker. Metacritic score 57, huh? All right. Anthem. It's on everything. It's, we got Cheese's Fisto here. <laughs> it's not Anthem. <laughs> RPG Elements Shooter. Last year. <laughs> this year. <laughs> is this Concord, man? It's not got Nexon Games? What, what is this, man? That's not what the first Descendant looks like? I thought it was like Minecraft, man. I thought it was like Valheim or something. This is the shit that people have been playing on Twitch? Making Twit Longers about? Oh my God, dude. We're cooked. Like societally speaking. You're thinking of once human again? I feel like the first descendant sounds like it takes place in prehistoric times. And once human sounds like it takes place in a sterling silver hallway on a spaceship in the future, man. They gotta switch titles. They, they, they got swapped at the hospital, man. That's not right. No wonder my ass gets confused by these two. Does it make any sense? <laughs> Is Jesus Fisto the first descendant? That would be uh, Jesus Fisto Jr. Junior Bacon Chess. Are you planning on watching Uglies on Netflix? Uh, let me just give you a little heuristic. I'm not planning on watching anything on Netflix except for uh, The Matrix, as long as they maintain the rights to The Matrix. Original Doom. Doom Doom 2. Doom 2. Hell on Earth. There you go. What about the Terminator anime? Come on, bud. Maybe if they ever get the Animatrix, maybe I'll watch that. Re-up on the last flight of the motherfucking Osiris. This looks like Rayman. Well, I'm at a loss. You know what? This, this could be um, once human. <laughs> Imagine. Fucking Horizon 2 Dawn. Forza Horizon. I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. And, and quite frankly, I'm not totally sure I even care. It's beyond good and evil. My man is going through it right now. Isn't this like Odyssey or dirt, odd enslaved Odyssey to the West? <laughs> it fucking is, man. <laughs> you ever wonder how much useless, decroded shit your brain holds? Never played this game in my life. Could not tell you anything about what it's about. But for some reason, there's like enough of a, an imprint on a shadow of a whisper 
that I saw the colors and the 3D model or something, and my brain went, "Isn't this? Doesn't this have Odyssey as one of the seven words in the title?" You gotta have like a button to delete files in your brain, man. Cause that there's no reason that should be there taking up space. Maybe I should be getting on Galaxy Gas. Is there a way you can <laughs> you can just target uh, all information I have about video games released from 1995 until about 2015? I'll just I'll I'll purge ten years at a time, once a decade. One day, I'm telling you, they'll make a memory machine. Yes, man. Fucking red wire, black wire. I know what you're talking about. He's Travis Morrison posting. Beatle adventure. Rock band Beatles. Okay, it's not a music party game from 2009 made by harmonics in the auditory perspective. <laughs> It's not a very, if, if you were looking for a guide on how to play Game Deal Guess, I would not recommend starting with Rock Band Beatles. It doesn't have, but if any of these show up green, you're getting it right. I'll tell you that. But most of them will not. Hmm. How about fucking Astrobot Rescue Mission? It's a single player game. That's not even the game I was looking for. All right, and it may be a platformer or an adventure game. Sick. Uh, all right. UFO 50. <laughs> it's, not a, it's not a compilation. It's not a retro-inspired compilation. How about fucking World of Goo, too? They don't have it. That's, that's bad. That's a bad sign. Braid Remastered. What, why can't I think of shit, man? Control? When did Control come out? 2019. All right. It's probably... Whoops, it should be hiding the action theme. Oh, so it's, a, it's not science fiction. It's probably an action-adventure game. Hmm, how interesting. In the third person, maybe it's Lords of the Fallen new. Okay. That, you'd think that that would help me out, but... It's a third-person action-adventure game from 2023. Alan Wake 2. I really needed that to be right. We'll see what we're cooking. From Sega, it's Yakuza, like a dragon. That's from 2020? It's the Hawaiian <laughs> Yakuza. Six, the song of life. Fuck. Yakuza Zero? That feels like it came out after the other ones. No, man. No. No! Help me! Help me! Yakuza Kiwami? Like a dragon? What? I don't know what's happening, man. Why did I get it wrong? They rebranded? This shit takes place in Canada? Like a Dragon is a subtitle used for side games. Get a life. Not you. Sega needs to get a life. You're okay. <laughs> That's wrong anyway. Argue amongst yourselves. I have no time for this bacchanalia. Just for that, you're getting Pugdoku. Never mind. <clears throat> I, don't see a, um, I don't see the Vancouver Canucks on it. So we're going straight to movie grid. Easy, man. Benedict Cumberbatch, double letter word in title. Uh, 
I'm not, I'm not reading all that shit. Sorry. Michael Sarah, let's get to the real meat and potatoes, okay? Scott Pilgrim versus the world. Title starts with Q to Z. Youth in Revolt. Released from 2010 to 2024. This is the end. That's the Michael Sarah line. I don't know. I don't know if there's a better pull that we could have gotten there, but that's the line I'm taking. Jessica Chastain. Title starts with Q to Z. The Martian. What the fuck else has Jessica Chastain been in, man? <laughs> She's in scenes from a marriage, man. Oh, she's not in the old one because that was an HBO miniseries that she was in. Fuck you, dude. The Imitation Game. Penguins of Madagascar. Operation DVD Premiere. Okay, that's my bad. I got. I was. I was fishing for. <laughs> I was fishing for a least common. What I was already cooked, man. I was already cooked on that one. Benedict Cumberbatch, double letter word and title. Yeah, it's. Uh, it's gonna have to be. I'm not doing this because it's Marvel. I'm doing this because it's Sam Raimi. Sam Raimi. It's a different story. Keep going. We can do this. 2010 to 2024. Is she in Nocturnal Animals. It's Amy Adams, isn't it? She in Sharp Objects? That's a TV miniseries. Fuck you. You're in Molly's game. I don't know what I don't know what else you're in. I don't care. Oh, Zero Dark Thirty. <laughs> yes, man. Yes, Zero Dark Thirty. All right. Yeah, the Neil Hamburger movie, huh? I had no idea. Makes sense. Michael Sarah, Neil Hamburger movie. Makes sense. Oh, Interstellar. Right, 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 right. Zero Dark 13 going on 30. Yes, man. Jennifer Garner, age 13, wishes that she was a grown-up so she could have freedom. Wakes up inside the body of a member of SEAL Team 6 about to raid Osama bin Laden's campaign in Hyderabad. Ah! <laughs> the lesson is be careful what you wish for that's in India I meant wherever they caught Osama Bin Laden it doesn't matter because he's been compromised to a permanent end and for that we thank John Cena What about Saddam Hussein? He's still out there, which... No, wait. They killed him. It's the Saddam who's insane, right? That's still at large. <laughs> I can't remember. That's me. That's me. Not a robot. Lil Wayne, I am not a human being. Northern Lion, I am not a robot. Fructose, a noun yes, meaning... Yes, man, yes. Wand, a noun meaning... Chia, a noun meaning an annual herb. Hamlet, a noun meaning a... Can I tell you something about chia seeds? I bought a bag of chia seeds um, when I first started making overnight oats. I'm going to say that was the second week of July. I still have the same amount of chia seeds that uh, were in the bag to begin with, and I use like a tablespoon per oats serving. So I'm using like seven tablespoons a week. I've been using the same bag for a year. They last like 20 years. It's crazy, man. They, ne they never run out. Like I look in the overnight oats, and it looks like it's like 90% chia seeds. 
But then I look in the bag and it's the same amount of chia seeds that were in there fucking right after 4th of July. How can this be profitable for Frito-Lay? Exactly, man, exactly. Ah, a noun meaning an emotion variously combining dread, veneration, and wonder that is- Sure, okay, that sounds like awe to me. A syndicate, a noun meaning a council or body of syndic. Yeah, all right. Intricate, a adjective meaning- ha Easy. Orientation. A noun meaning the act yeah, we or can process take better though when all your cares away. Extremely. An adverb meaning in an extreme man. Yep. Ombudsman. Mm -hmm. A noun nice meaning try. a person who... What? That's how you spell ombudsman, man. Did I typo? You mistyped. Oh, probably because I typed too fast. My keyboard couldn't handle it. You said ombudsman. Fuck, man. This was my perfect, too. Sporin. A noun meaning a pouch, usually of skin with the hair. Whatever. Absorptive. A noun meaning the process of a... Glorp me. Dictat. A noun meaning... Fuck you. Lilliput. A noun meaning an island in... Moulage. A noun meaning an... Never getting that one wrong. Sporin and dic dictat with a K? That's psychotic. Same score as NL. Okay, I literally typoed, so don't get a big head, okay? I'm just saying, if I was on stage at Scripps, it's not going down like that. Now, they don't let 35-year-olds compete in the spelling bee. Probably because we'd all be out by, like, word nine. But I'm just saying. You're, you're, you're catching me at my weakest, okay? It's a pancake. Pandan leaves. Pandan leaves, food coloring, rice, flour, sugar, coconut milk. It's food guesser. You know what I'm thinking. It's Indonesia. It's Indonesia, guys. I show Speed's favorite country. Librarian, I know you saw it. You're probably feeling pretty glazed. It looks tasty. I don't know. I'd call it like a muffin, maybe. It looks like bacteria. <laughs> Lamb, onions, potatoes, carrots, bell peppers, tomatoes, garlic, water, salt, black pepper, paprika, cumin, coriander. It's popular among nomadic tribes in the region. <laughs> It really, I was going to say, they put like a whole fucking bulb of garlic, man. That is not a clove or then they didn't peel it or nothing. That's like, they left the paper on. <laughs> I also can't tell if this is one serving or if this is like 30 people's worth of this dish. Just from the perspective, it's like there's, there's an ear in there. I don't know, man. I mean, yeah, they, I mean, I'm thinking Mongolia because it says nomadic tribes. Mongolia. Lamb? Are they fucking with lamb in Mongolia? Maybe not so much, but it's maybe, maybe like Kazakhstan? It's Kazakhstan. Dim Lama. It looks fine. See, now, other types, such as horse, I would have said Mongolia again, probably. It's a chocolate sandwich. This is fucking disgusting, man. Is this the damn Netherlands again? Fuck you, man. That's even worse than the sprinkles, honestly. <laughs> That's, I know I go off on the, the fairy bread from Australia, where it's just like white bread, butter, and sprinkles, but the chocolate flakes on a Kaiser roll might even be worse. That's too much, man. Don't give me this bullshit, too. You can't make fun of it because the habit of eating bread toppings like Vlaken is deeply rooted in Dutch culture. Fuck you, I'll make fun of it. Chai's Hershey's Kisses sandwich? Get a life, man. 
Oh, they like to eat toppings on bread in this country? Wow, let me introduce you to like um, every other country that's ever existed in the history of planet Earth. I'm a gastronomical genius. Scooped bagel with white chocolate chips, keto ass, fucking chocolate sandwich, Ludwig head ass. Not you. Not you acted. It wasn't loading. That's why I was saying that. I know, Chad, okay, you, this might spoil it for you. Or you might spoil it for me. I know this motherfucker. Or am I just thinking that this is the curly head kid from Stranger Things? I feel like I know this motherfucker. Who is this guy? It is old Ryan Gosling. I've seen this motherfucker before as well. That's Rebecca Ferguson. That's Rebecca Ferguson's sister. Oh, here we go. John Bernthal, fucking Sicario. Please be, please be Sicario. Please be Sicario. Christian Bale's forehead. <laughs> Knight of Cups. Is it Knight of Cups? They don't even have Knight of Cups. What the fuck is Christian Bale? The Prestige? The Prestige? I don't think John Bernthal's in the Prestige, man. Matt Damon and this one's gonna fucking sting. How do I not know this? How do I not know this, man? Skip me so I get names. As Lee, uh, Carol Shelby. Oh, it's a fucking Ford Ferrari, man. Ford versus, wait. Yeah, 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 it's Ford Ferrari. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's Ford Ferrari. There was something in my head. I was like, Brad Pitt's in this. Where the fuck is Brad Pitt? And it turns out that Brad Pitt is not in this. He's in F1, which isn't even out yet. Noah Jupe. I don't know how I think I know you. And in that other movie about racing... Speed Racer? Cars. <laughs> A grand, is he in Gran Turismo? I don't know, man. Who cares? It's the kid from The Quiet Place. Thank you. Now I know where I knew him. Jack Morgan goes to London, Berlin, and India in three entries of what endless James Patterson series? Books you buy at the grocery store. I don't know it. Dr. Montgomery leaves Seattle for LA and stuff ensues. That's the premise of the TV spinoff, What Practice? Private Practice. Just makes sense. In feudal Japan, a kunoichi was the female version of what sort of professional? Fucking ninja. Duh. To make Philippine kare kare sauce, you'll have to grind up what legumes? I'm going to say peanuts. Oh! <laughs> Whew. Horseshoe crabs have blue blood because of what element? No, man. No, no, no. What metal do you need to make brass, bronze, gliding metal, and a bunch of other alloys? Tin. Electric wiring, copper, fucking copper. I didn't know that. It's not gliding metal, it's gilding metal. Ah. <laughs> not that that would have helped me, I think. Established in the early 20th century, the Otis and Schwannard are art institutes in what city? Early 20th century? Can I hit you with something crazy? Maybe it's Canadian. Maybe it's Montreal. 
Um, running a half mile along the Tujunga Wash, the History of California mural is nicknamed the Great Wall of San Francisco. <laughs> Great Wall of Los Angeles. Let's just be honest, that we were down to two because it was not going to be the Great Wall of fucking Fresno, okay? The Great Wall of Carson City. How do we do? Ten points is a pretty good, pretty good performance. I could live with that. The Great Wall of Bakersfield. Sort these superheroes by when they first debuted, starting with the latest. I have absolute, like, and The Incredibles must be pretty late because that shit was like 2004. Everything else, I'm going to assume Captain Planet was the late 1980s. I bet it's just before Power Rangers. And then He-Man is before all of them. I do feel like Deadpool might be like early 2000s or something. Late in that, maybe I'm way off. I don't know what the fuck Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy are. So something's not right here. Maybe the Power Rangers were like in the 70s in Japan and it got resurfaced in the early 1990s in North America. I think it's, oh, it's from Spongebob. <laughs> All right, I'll live with that. Deadpool's from 1991. He-Man, 1981. I honestly thought there would be one from like fucking 1906 or something. I'm not a fake millennial, okay? Real elder millennials don't fucking, they don't fuck with Spongebob. If you're... 35 to 42, you weren't fucking with Spongebob. If you're 34 to like 26, you were probably fucking with Spongebob. That shit made it to Canada when I was in like the ninth grade or something like that. Your ninth grade, you know, you're going through puberty. You're trying to like flex that you're not a boy anymore. You're like a man. You're not gonna be like, hey, did you guys see the new episode of Spongebob? Fuck that. I was like, you guys see what this shit Tony Soprano pulled last night? Do you guys see do you guys see the shit that Ray said to his mom on Everybody Loves Raymond? God. He's my idol. I'm 28, I fuck with SpongeBob. You're too old to not realize that that's what the fuck I just said, man. That's what I'm saying. It's like verbatim what I said. I said if you were like 26 to 34, you're probably fucking with Spongebob. This is like, on average, I think of Spongebob as a Gen Z show, personally. But I think it's maybe like elder Gen Z, youngest millennials. Like I think if you're 20 to 34, that's your show that you grew up like idolizing. My age demographic, Rocket Power, Doug, Rocco's Modern Life, Hey Arnold, I'm like a little bit, I'm just, I'm, it's not, they, they will not divide us, it's like, you know, six, seven years pre-Spongebob, Rugrats, yeah, Ren and Stimpy, stuff like that. If I was born in 1994 instead of 1988, I'd probably be fucking with Spongebob, it's just, you know, you can't control when your parents were doing it. That's their business. It's affected by all sorts of societal factors, I'm sure, as well. But, like, it's just when I happen to pop out, man. I, I've got fucking conscious memories of watching the O.J. Simpson trial on TV. I've seen shit you wouldn't believe. Juxtastat. It is kind of crazy to think that I was like alive when the Soviet Union fell. And the, I mean, I wasn't like, I don't have memories of it, but like I was alive. I, I should get a t-shirt. I outlived the Berlin Wall. 
fuck you, Berlin ass wall. You will not divide us. We took that shit down. Let's go, boys! We fucking did it! <laughs> Me, age like <laughs> 14 months. Yeah! They're coming to. Wait, no, that's a different. I was thinking of Neil Diamond instead of David Hasselhoff. They were definitely not singing, We're coming to America on the, on the Berlin Wall. Higher mean daily temperature in spring, let's say the desert. No, that's a bad guess. Higher percentage of residents who are non-citizens, Florida. Okay, I'm, I'm fucking cooked, man. Higher percentage of units with two bedroom rents over 1500 bucks, Rhode Island. Higher percentage of adults with heart disease, Ohio. Higher percentage of people who are boomers. Olympia, Washington. We bring it back. There's a tricky one on that one. At least we got the last three. We clutched up. Olympia has all the I hate Seattle boomers. That's kind of what I figured. Also figure like cities tend to trend uh, younger. Like Raleigh is a bigger city than Olympia, no disrespect. I'm sure you got like a couple of mob pizzas there or whatever. Bases, daily news quiz, pick five. Pick five. Prosthetic. Processed synthetic staple fibers. <laughs> Bangladesh. Fucking horrible guess. Abs insane guess. China? What would, the fuck were you thinking, man? There you go. Now we're talking. <laughs> Thailand. Okay, they're in there. 13 is not crazy. Oftentimes, we do like to throw in a little Germany. Okay, number five. How about the United States of America then? We win these. We win these! Senegal? I never would have said Senegal, honestly, but there they are. The fucking thread district, man. Of course, you got fish stole. Always finish up with a little fish stole. Ah, I hate to say it, man. I hate to say it. I think it's possible fish stole might be washed. No, just show it. Just show it. Boys. <laughs> it's a hammerhead shark. They update every 36 hours. It's so annoying. That shit is irritating. It's like when um, American Idol used to be on like three days a week. You couldn't just be like, oh, it's Tuesday. It's American Idol. You had to be like, oh, Monday's the fucking songs. And then Wednesday is like second chance auditions and then Thursday is like you get the results of America's voting or something like that and you're like bro come on I'm trying to see what Frank Barone's up to Ma! no big news in fishing lately huh still dealing with some shit from like a month and a half ago kayak angler toward 11 miles towed 11 miles in life and death battle with Marlin That is, welcome back, Ernest Hemingway. <laughs> the old man in the sea. I'm getting pissed off too, because I don't know, somehow I've found myself being fed uh, into the anti-intellectual algorithm on X, the everything app. I know what you're going to say. That's everything posted there. Yeah, but this is like outwardly, so it's not even trying to conceal it. So there's like this Ernest Hemingway quote that's going around that's like, there is no symbolism in the old man in the sea. It's about a man and a fish. And people like quote tweeted and they're like, this is why Hemingway is like the most based author. And I'm like, 
He's playing a joke on you, you dumb motherfucker. Have you read the book? This shit is about a man and a fish, but it's about so much more than a man and a fish. <laughs> it's a 73-page metaphor, motherfucker, if you actually read the book. And then the based fisherman decides not to give up. He literally mews on it and fucking po no, it's it's he was trolling you, man. He's trolling you. Ten times the the man, the Sigma man. Anyway.